Yeah, we're ready for fish. Like 20 to 30 tilapia would be great. It couldn't be any more perfect. We've been tracking the levels. Mr. Hintz, everything's going horribly wrong. We need to do something. Oh no. Yuck, cloudy water. How did we get to this point? What happened was we ended up adding a little bit too much potassium carbonate to the system and the pH went up. When the pH went up, the water was cloudy. There were these weird bubbles and it just didn't look very good. Now we weren't 100% sure whether this cloudiness was due to something biological or something chemical. And if you have an idea, please comment down below. What we did is we probably reacted a little bit too quickly and we should have been more methodical in our approach. What we did was we emptied out some of the water from the tank, we topped it up with fresh water, and we also added some acid to bring the pH back down. As the pH came down, the water became less cloudy and started to clear up. This gave us an opportunity to talk about the microbes that are actually important in an aquaponics system. As we looked into the reasons for cloudy water, one of the most prevalent explanations was some type of bacterial bloom or microbial community causing the water to become cloudy. Dr. Lisa Stein from the University of Alberta is a microbiologist, and I actually had the opportunity to listen to her talk about some of her work a little over a year ago. Basically, there are three families of microbes that are important in an aquaponic system. First, there are the ammonia oxidizers. These oxidize the fish waste to nitrite. Second, there are the nitrite oxidizers who oxidize nitrite to nitrate. The other group is this Comomox group, the complete ammonia oxidizers who are actually able to oxidize ammonia to nitrate. Dr. Stein said that this third group is relatively new in the research. One reason being that they were kind of hiding in the data set and looked a lot like the ammonia and nitrite oxidizers in the experiments that were being performed. The benefits of this third group is they can potentially thrive in different conditions than the first two. Usually it is recommended that aquaponic systems function between 6.5 and 7.5 to optimize plant, microbe, and fish health. However, Dr. Stein's research involved manipulating the pH of a system down to 5.6 over a period of 40 days. What her group found was that in most scenarios, the microbial communities were able to adapt and the Comox group became more abundant. A new paper that I came across stated that they are still determining how exactly the Comomox group accomplishes this ammonia to nitrate oxidation. However, there are some beneficial implications to aquaponic systems, especially due to the high fish toxicity of nitrite in the system. Our takeaway from this experience is that the microbial communities are extremely special and important in an aquaponic system. We were surprised at how resilient they are but also how making small changes slowly could be more beneficial to our system because it gives this group more time to adapt to new conditions. We definitely responded too quickly to start in increasing the pH as well as bringing it down afterwards. After reestablishing a baseline and continuing to feed the microbes in the system, our ammonia and nitrite levels remain low, so we think our microbial community is still strong and functional despite our inexperience. So that's Awkward Aquaponics for this week. Thanks for following along with us. In our next video, we hope to add tilapia, so make sure you're subscribed.